Twitch, Twitter, and also lovecityarts.org. Just want to let you know, um, the announcements fresh out the gate is that we're still looking for actors and aspiring actors who want to participate in our sip and play programming. And also, we're going to be doing a People's Cabaret on May 16th at noon. If you're interested in coming on and presenting your talent, we would love to have you. There are details about the People's Cabaret at lovecityarts.org. I think those are my only two announcements for the day. I've been playing with getting the announcements out the way so that then we can not be distracted by Love City um, advertisements throughout our time together. Shout outs to Creatives Near You app. They have um, launched a fresh new version of their application that is essentially a database of uh, artists all over your area. You can download the app and put a pin on the map of who you are as a creative um, and then find Creatives Near You, which is the reason why the app is called canoe creatives near you and also shout out to collaborative conscious um, which is a uh, group that is led and organized by my friend rosa Um, they are working on all kinds of projects regarding education in the bronx so if you're into um, creating access for underprivileged kids Um, in the Bronx and beyond, uh, check out Collaborative Conscious as well. Anyway, those are my announcements. Now we continue on with the good report. Thanks for being here. It is May, Sunday, May the 3rd, 2020, day 51. Um, This is the good report. As you know, during the good report, I always shuffle this handy dandy deck of angel cards. Oh, you know what I have to do? I have to turn on my comments tonight because comments stopped working over on my platform. And so I actually have to go on over here. I should have done that earlier. And I should have been more smooth about it. But, you know, I'm not a pretentious kind of girl. I'm just kind of what you see is what you get. Oh, I don't see any comments there. I see people, but I don't see any comments. Let me know if you're watching. Anyway, yeah, I'm not pretentious. Any bit of my pretense has been kind of burned up by life and the kind of fundamental understanding that we're all kind of going through the same like 10 stories. One of some of the greatest philosophers say that life is made up of like 10 fundamental stories that are like told over and over again, you know, anger, happiness, reunions, departures like it's the same kind of stuff you're coming and going you're coming and you're going trying to do the best that we can hey Merle good to see you tonight um so anyway I gather here at 8 30 every night little Miss Muffet sitting on a tuffet of gratitude and appreciation and I just um come on here to be with you And I have angel cards, a little deck of angel cards. Depending on how the lights hit me in here. It's a deck of cards, though. It's just really bright under these lights. I'm going to train out the lights eventually for, like, something different. But for right now, it's what I have. And I'm grateful for it. Let's see what this card... Oop. I think we've picked that card before. Let me see if I can shuffle it up. I think that's a recent card. I try not to, like, overdo it. Um... All right, that's the word that sticks out. That is the word that has popped out of this card deck that's not been recently um, shared by us. We use this card to kind of anchor our time together. I like to liken this to um, a well, kind of in the middle of Love City, where we kind of just come and sit and just kind of share together. Tonight's card is Celebration. Hey, Jimmy. Good to see you. I'm going to read the explanation for this card. The card, we picked We picked a card for the last 51 days together. At, at first, we started with the Book of Awakening cards, but then we went over to Angel cards. Anyway, today's word is celebration. 
Take time to recognize and savor what is important to you and honor it with festivities. Rejoice, have fun, and enjoy the party. Ooh, what an oxymoronic card for this period of our lives. What an, what an oxymoronic card. Celebration in the middle of all this chaos. Take time to recognize and savor what is important to you and honor it with festivities. Rejoice, have fun, and enjoy the party. Wow. Wow. This card just told us to enjoy the party in the midst of coronavirus, y'all. It's kind of wild. Well, let me tell you something. I kind of resonate with this card. And the reason why I resonate with this card is because I just got off the phone. It was a three-hour phone call sponsored by coronavirus. You know, this, you know, this, you know, we want to connect with people and be close with people and be in relationship with people in this time. And so I just got off of the phone with a friend. Um, that I haven't spoken with in seven years. She and I were very close when I was living in Wyoming. And we just got to exchange stories about how our lives have developed and how our lives have kind of unfolded over the last seven years. And it was beautiful. It was a celebration. It really was. This card, you know, rejoice, have fun, and enjoy the party. We just laughed and giggled like we did under oak trees in Wyoming. And, and nothing's changed about the fundamental nature and love in our relationship. I love that. I love that there are people that I'm connected with who, no matter how long we've been apart and no longer, no, lo- no matter how long we've not um, been together in physical space, the love still remains. Um, and so, hey, Angela, good to see you tonight. Thanks for stopping by, um, the good report. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, I'm thinking also, I've been thinking about this. Maybe in the future I can do, can I do the good report on a Zoom and then have people kind of join me and share on the Zoom? Let's, I'll do that soon. I'll, I'll do like a, uh, open house good report where I do it and people can go to the website, come in through Zoom, and chat with us live. That's what I'll do starting tomorrow. That'll be fun, right? Hey, Julie. Oh, I see a love. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, so tomorrow, I love you too, Angela. Tomorrow, because this thing has been evolving. Like, it, if you look back in the videos, um, day one to today, day 51, you'll see that there's been so many different versions of this experiment called the good report. And I've been on, you know, for the last few days feeling like, Oh, you know what? It could be good to like, have like live call in or live video, depending on how comfortable people are. And I'll figure it out. But anyway, in the meantime, tomorrow we'll have a guest even if it's just me sitting in the Zoom room by myself doing what I usually do. Because I can I can put... Anyway, I'm, we won't get into the technical nature of it. I hope that you're having a good night. Um, I come here every night at 8.30, plus or minus a few minutes, to hold space for gratitude, light, and love. Um, and apparently tonight, according to the card that we've picked, Celebration. So anyway, thank you for tuning in. Um, I'm going to give myself an opportunity to take a drink of water and then we'll be back to hold space for all of those who are suffering and hopefully bring, bring a higher vibration of love. I'm not sure if you can hear or not, but the AC is on in my room slash studio slash bedroom slash everything because I live in New York City 
and this shit is expensive and so we live in shoebox sized places and 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 are happy with it because of our proximity to the city that never sleeps but has been kind of sleeping because we're all in the house that's another thing that's kind of rough too because we're all not all of us but those of us who are fortunate enough we're paying our rent but we're not really we're still paying the the crazy prices to stay in the house part of the allure of new york city is that even though you're paying high rent you can get out of the house and go to central park or go to the museums or go to broadway or be on broadway you know it's it's so close you know that's one of the perks of of paying ridiculous rent costs to be here and coronavirus has kind of put us all in the house and said sit your ass down and because she said that hey ashley hey melissa Oh, Angela, thank you for saying I'm a great light. I love you. Um, yeah, because of us being stuck indoors, you're not really getting the benefits for the cost of being here. So that's been a little sucky if I'm honest about it. But, you know, being able to be here with you all of you, with all of you in shared space and, and share these moments of gratitude nightly for the last 51 days has been fun frankly um i've enjoyed holding this space for the one of you two of you three of you four of you and and the countless others that listen back in the podcast replays shameless plug um of love if you don't want to tune into this because it's a lot to kind of watch my mug um talk to you about light love and gratitude and it gets a little heavy or sad or whatever um i post most of the replays of the audio of these to any of the places where you get your um, podcast. So if you're a Spotify kind of girl, the audio for these are on Spotify. Um, and of course, they're, they're stream on YouTube and Facebook Live and all that type of stuff. Um, and they don't do that for my ego. They do that so that I can let you know that you are loved. You are loved today. You are, you are loved today. On this Sunday, May 3rd, I still can't believe it's not April anymore. But on May 3rd, today, you are loved. You are valued. You are appreciated. You are a light for someone in this world. You matter to me. You matter to someone. Um, And if you doubt it, I double dog dare you to ask someone... You know, it's a vulnerable moment, but if you really are at your wits end and you feel like you don't matter to anyone, ask them, hey, do I even matter to you? Do I matter to you? And if you're around the right people um, or if you keep asking around enough, someone's going to say, yeah, certainly you matter to me. Um, Our lives are not disposable. Um, We have purpose and meaning to be here, even if that's just to smile at your loved one or to say I love you or any of the other mundane things that we've kind of devalued I love you too Betsy you know we've devalued the things that mattered and propped up the things that don't matter but like your bank account is not who you are guys and gals and everybody in between or not identifying as a guy or gal you're more than your bank account Whatever sitting in your Bank of America or your credit union or your, you know, wherever you bank or, you know, for the people who are unbanked in America who just have cash kind of hanging out in their mattresses, that's one way to do it too. I'm not going to judge you for it. That's just, that's an approach. And for you as well, like, none of that matters. How you show up in the world, how you choose to be in the world, who we choose to be in the world, that is what matters. One moment at a time, one breath at a time. That's why I'm so grateful that I got to hang out with Adrian tonight. Um, my friend whose life has just blossomed into this simple, beautiful flower. And it was so good to reconnect with her tonight and just see that like she's doing, she looks good and she's doing good. And I look good and I'm doing good. (laughs) And so 
there was just so much joy in it. And I think that that can be found um, with a myriad of people, depending on who you are. There's someone in your life. If it's not me, it doesn't need to be me. It could be me. But um, someone in your life is cheering for you. Someone wants you to win. Someone wants you to win. I and if and if no one comes to mind, I want you to win. I want you to taste. If you're not allergic, I want you to taste the juiciness of a of a strawberry again, blueberries, ice cream, pizza, um, uh, kale, chicken, um, turkey, beef. These are all food. You can tell I'm a foodie. The sun on your face, the wind on your face, the sand from the beach, the beach. All of these things are the beautiful parts of being alive. And we get to experience all of those things. Um, That's the gift. That's the gift. So if you're struggling and you're a little sad, just remember that like... There's so much to be grateful for and there's so much to hope for. We will get back. We will rebound. We will rebound. We will... We will rise again. Hey, Ross. Good to see you, buddy. So, anyway, this is The Good Report. I've been on here for 51 days holding space for light gratitude and appreciation this is my contribution to the noise um, of the internet this is my contribution to the noise of life Um, we can spend 23 hours being freaked out paranoid scared and afraid if we want to but for one hour we're going to get together on Al Gore's internet as long as streaming is free and hold space for what is good as well 23 hours if you want to be a stick in the mud and if you want to be sad for 23 hours if bad things happen to you like my friend who recently passed away or my friends who died from covid or you know all this immense suffering that we are seeing in the world if if you know if you want to be sad about all of that you're that's valid i'm not coming in here with pollyanna bullshit saying like you know don't be sad Like, if you want to be sad, be sad for 23 hours. But for the one hour that we're together, or for the 17 minutes and 42, 43, 44 seconds that that we're now, that we've now been here, 23 hours of, of, of sadness is okay if you make sure that you carve out at least a little bit of time for gratitude and appreciation. Because it's not all bad. If you are watching this now or listening to it after the fact, you have the gift of being able to have technology, technological sounds and color piped into your miniature device or your machine. You are one of the blessed. And these are just facts. And I don't make any apology about these facts. If you are a person, I know that we've lost so much I'm saying this as an unemployed, uninsured human being today, right now. All of those things are true. But if I'm here in this climate controlled apartment under these studio lights in my home studio, breathing a word of encouragement to all of you, if I'm doing that, I'm bl- I've hit the jackpot. Food, access, friends, People that have said to me, don't you fall down. If you feel like you're about to fall down, you reach out to me first. This is a number of people in my life, earth angels. If you feel like you're about to fall, you call me first. You will be okay. We all have those angels in our lives. Someone who values and loves us. And I hope that that person magnifies for you in your mind and in your consciousness. I hope that that person or that group of people, family or not, um, I hope that they rise in your spirit right now and remind you that you are far from alone. 
You are far from vulnerable. You are far from devalued. You are the most precious being in the heart and mind of Father, Mother, God. Whatever you think God is, you know, some of y'all think he's a big white man in the sky, which is one version of it, I guess. But whatever you esteem God to be, um, that divine consciousness, that love has you in its heart and in its mind, in its thinking center and in its heart center. Source has you, spirit has you, God has you in the palm of its heart and mind space. Some of y'all going to think I'm woo-woo and that I've lost it. Some of y'all are getting what I'm saying right now when I say that you are held in the heart and mind of the Almighty. Hey, Josh. Betsy says, thankful for friends for... Oh, yeah, we got comments. Betsy says, Lord, help me to have patience with my neighbor mowing... I guess they're mowing the grass while the baby's attempting to go to bed. I'm so sorry. Hey, Daniel, good to see you. Betsy says, thankful for friends for sure. And then Josh stopped by, popped through for a moment in time. So grateful for all of you who have come together. Now would be a perfect time to just call in all of the parts of ourselves. Just the parts. Not the whole thing. Just the parts of ourselves who have been in suffering today. Any areas where we've struggled with loving ourselves and being gentle with ourselves, we call that suffering into this space right now, in addition to all of the suffering of the world, all of the pain, all of the angst, all of the mourning. We just take a pause of remembrance right now. Forgetting what's behind us and forgetting what's ahead of us, we pull ourselves into this present moment. And we invite all who are heavy and all who are heavy laden. And we invite you watching now and those who will listen later into the rest. Of this present moment. Nowhere to be. Nowhere to come from. Just this present moment. Oh I just love this time. In our day. I just love this time. When we're able to just come into 9.33pm Eastern. Whatever your time is. And just sit here. And just rest. To bring our suffering and to bring our pain to the well and just allow love, divine love, and the love of each other to just wash over all of the suffering. Ooh, I just believe in that kind of love. I believe in that kind of love power. A love power that just with taking a breath. Can bring me to a space of now 934 where I am just at peace. And can lay my burdens down by the riverside. To study war no more. To not study any of the conflict or internal warfare, external warfare. But to lay the burdens down. To study war no more. I'm not sure if this is what that means. But to me that means to not study strife and and be concerned with internal strife and external strife and conflict and wars of the spirit and wars of the flesh. To study war no more. To lay our burdens down. That is the invitation. Hey, Cynthia. That is the invitation. To just take a breath.
and to invite those who are suffering and the parts of us that's suffering in the world into this space of love and appreciation. Just one human being to another. Just one lovable human being to another. And if you didn't know that you're lovable, I'm here to tell you tonight that you are. You're lovable. And that, I put the word away already, but our word of tonight and our word of the day is celebration. The fact that you're lovable just as you are is a celebration. It's a celebration. Nothing to add to it. Nothing to take away from it. You as you are, are a celebration. A beautiful celebration because you're breathing. Because you're breathing. So, um, these things can go as long or as short as I want. So, um... I I know the producer and director and cast member and uh, craft tables guy for this production. (laughs) I know all of those people and this can go as, I mean, some days we've gone for an hour and a half and then other days, depending on what people say they're grateful for, um, we, we, you know, it, it goes and comes. I used to be able to have comments on the screen, but then, but then. So what I think I'm going to do is starting tomorrow, I'm going to just go live on I'll I'll figure out how to go live on a Zoom through Facebook and then I'll leave the doors open so that anybody who wants to come into um, the space can. How about that? I just got to figure out some of the, the technical details. So it could be tomorrow or sometime this week. But either way, I'll be here holding space for you Um not for you, but with you. Well, for you, maybe. I mean, you're holding space for me, so I can hold space for you, too. Anyway, have a great night. Um, I hope that your heart is at peace. And I hope that if your heart is not at peace under the sound of my voice, you will allow a peace that passes your understanding to just envelop your heart and overtake your heart it can happen in a moment i'm really been i've been studying up on and really um engaging this mind body spirit connection this connection between head and heart your thoughts and your feelings and you can think your way into a new way of being and i want to encourage you if you're not already um interested in positive thought Not ignoring the suffering of the world, but just the idea that you can think yourself into a new circumstance or a new environment or a new way of being in the world. That you could think yourself um, into a new space is incredible. It's incredible. It's it's incredible. It's it's been incredible to learn more about that and to get myself free enough in my mind that I'm. you know, that I'm not so bogged down. I'm not so bogged down by the external pressures. You know, I'm, I'm just allowing myself to kind of show up exactly as I am. And it just feels great. There was there, there was a lot of work that went into being me. And we've talked about this in previous episodes. Um, but like... There was a lot of work, a lot of pressure, and a lot of, um, a lot of stress trying to be me, trying to be a singer, trying to be an actor, trying to be a best friend, trying to be a lover, trying to be a boyfriend, trying to be, you know, a television anchor guy of love, like trying, like all of that was putting a lot of pressure on my life. I was really stressed out a lot, particularly about like how my actions, I mean, I think it's healthy to be mindful of how your actions are going to affect someone else. But I was really, really hyper aware and paranoid about how people thought about me. 
and the th- and the work I put out and the things I did. And I think this is universal. I don't think I'm a unicorn. I'm not trying to sit on here and trying to like be in like I don't think I'm special. But I'm, t- I'm telling you about my life. Um, I was really, really stressed out about how people thought about me, um, what people what people thought about me, how they thought about me, and frankly, how they perceived anything I was doing online and beyond. Um, and that was an extreme prison. And that was just the Instagram, Facebook version of me. What about like working a job and being subjected to the fact that like I'm not a morning person and people would just be all up in my face in the morning and they just want they just wanted what they wanted. They wanted their they wanted the Andre that they know and love, like their version of me. They wanted me to pull it up on the computer like you pull up Google. You know, what do you mean you're not a morning person? Smile. It's 9 a.m. And I'm like, I'm not Google or, or any other or Wikipedia or anything else. You could like, I'm a human being. You can't like pull me up. AndreStith.com or I'm sorry, AndreStith.net exists, but it's not like on my body, like in my spirit. Like if you want happy songs and stuff like that and a polished performance and look, go to the website. I'm a human being. And so anyway, this is a bit of a rant, but I hope that like the future that we inhabit, I hope that it's more, um, I hope that it's more gentle. I hope that we're allowed to show up exactly as we are and that be enough. And and I'm so glad that like at the very beginning, I said, I will come in here and I will sit on this muffet and I will sit on this tuffet of gratitude and appreciation. And if two people, one person, five people, you know, six people, 600 people, it don't really matter to me. If nobody shows up, I'm just going to speak the goodness of the Lord from my heart. I'm going to speak the goodness of the life that I'm experiencing. Hopefully someone will be uplifted by that the same way that happened in testimony services of my child. Childhood. In my childhood, I'm a Baptist, was raised Baptist, and then Pentecostal, and then Assemblies of God, and then Church of God for college. It's been like, it's been, it's been such a journey, but my Lord. In Baptist, in Baptist services, in, in my early years, they used to have testimony services. You would go, this is like, this is not Bible study. This is not Wednesday night, you know, worship. This was a back room in Second Baptist Church in the deacon's room and the deacons and their wives and their children and other pastors would meet in the back room sometimes it was an upper room sometimes it was in the basement but this was on like this was on like the same level as a sanctuary but they we used to meet in this back room and people would go around the tables and as led by the spirit they would pick a number in the hymn book and um you know, they would, um, they would, um, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like, can't hit the note tonight, not going to do it, but they would do that. They would do that. And then they would talk about the goodness of their lives they would they would testify about the goodness of god about how they were struggling with something but god brought them through how they were in a moment of present pain but they trusted that god would be with them these were the elders in my community you know the baptist hymn book ancestry where we would just go back between prayers and hymns and songs for about an hour or two. Seek God in back rooms of churches and then go back home or go back into communities. And so that is the lineage that I come from. I know no other way to be beyond to create spaces where you just come And you sit down and you say, wow, though my 23 hours of my life was absolutely shitty, I still have so much to be grateful for. I think that's what the 
the, I think that's what the elders were trying to point to. So much life going on, but let's create a moment weekly of a remembrance, an Ebenezer, a a a a a, a remembrance place. Let's create these weekly shrines of the goodness of spirit. And so that's what we did. We gathered. And this is before we cared about whether notes were on pitch or off pitch. I never, I never, sitting in front of those hymn books or those song books in prayer service in the single digits, five, six, seven, eight years old, back rooms of Second Baptist Church, I never ever worried about pitch and intonation and pretty sounds and riffs and runs. None of that mattered in that time in my life. That those things were all those things were added on to my artistic journey when I went to school and learned that someone could be the best and someone could be not the best. I learned I learned that shit later in life. I don't think it really hit me until college that 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 there could be elite singers and schmear singers and that you got to somehow be competitive in that you know in that space so that you can you know be full time with your artistry. None of that was introduced until um college and I dare say it wasn't until my first cruise ship and if you look back in the archives I look like a damn skeleton because I thought that the skinnier I was the more attractive I was God forgive me for thinking that the skinnier I was the more attractive I was I look like fucking Skeletor I look like and people who knew me for that time in my life they're like don't you go back to that It's uh, there's a picture that exists on the internet if you find it then you'll win the prize um I am this big in a in a blue and white speedo. And I look emaciated. I look like like one of those feed I'm not going to do that. That's not kind. But you'll know what I'm talking about if I say I look like one of those feed the children commercials and I hope they are being fed. Since I've said that I should go and like donate because I'm I'm promise you I'm not I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just like letting you know that like that's what I look like. And it wasn't healthy because I thought that thin, thin, being thin was equated to a high self-esteem. Even if that meant suffering and not eating or, you know, not, you know, doing multiple shows a week, but, and working out, but like, but eating peanuts, like just like, just a weird, weird place. Right. But then to, but then to, look into the present moment of my life and see that like oh wow it didn't take all of that to be loved and to feel loved to be loved and to feel loved so anyway all of that to say I hope that you're feeling love today I hope that you're feeling value today from my heart to yours not for the sake of me being here on this internet under these lights talking for my ego's sake but just for the sake of you and me I hope that we are just realizing more and more that we are enough um, that we are valued and that we are the most precious children of a very very loving and benevolent universe that wants things to work out for us um we just got to come together we just got to come together all right i'm gonna go cook i've been wanting a cheeseburger for about i mean i don't think i've had a cheeseburger since hold on hold on hold on i ordered out a couple times have I had a cheeseburger? I don't think I've had a cheeseburger since quarantine started, which means that that's 51 days of not having a cheeseburger. Plus, if you add the days before where I'm just not mindful that I didn't. But I got some really, really nice, high quality, like pressed formed, fresh burger patties. And I'm going to do, I'm going to caramelize some onions um, in a separate pan. And then I'm going to fry those burgers up and do a caramelized onion cheeseburger with fresh stone ground mustard and a little bit of mayo and tomatoes and lettuce. Like it's going to be like the best cheeseburger of the week. It's going to be my first cheeseburger of the pandemic. 
Hey, Anne. It's perfect that Anne is watching this because Anne is a foodie as well. And Sunday. Listen, and Sunday meal prep for the week, child, can cook. Love you, Anne. Love you, Cynthia. Love you, Josh, Betsy, Daniel, whoever um, came through tonight to share in this space of gratitude, love, and appreciation. Um, it's just me showing up and, and hitting the button. Um, this is the way that I kind of move in the world. Um, these days, it hasn't always been this way, but these days, um, when I'm breathing, I'm, I'm grateful. And when I'm breathing, I'm trying to find ways to like not be in conflict or to be in stress or to be in agitation. Um, that's what I'm trying to lean towards. So uh, any ways that I can cultivate spaces of harmony, especially as it relates to my artistry and the artistry of my friends and strangers I encounter, the more that I can show up just as me. Um, and hopefully that'll be a better me tomorrow than I was today, then the more love we have on the earth, right? Okay, I'm done. Have a very good night. I will see you tomorrow. Love you dearly. Thank you for hanging out. Thank you for being part of um, the city of love, Love City. And also thank you for tuning into The Good Report. I will see you tomorrow night at 8.30. I hope that you are um, taking one moment at a time in this quarantine. Take care.